and 1 through 11. And the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. Okay, before this, he tells him, he does, it doesn't actually specify God hardened his heart. It mentions Pharaoh hardened his heart. But God knew that Pharaoh would harden his heart because he told Moses before that they would um, he, they'd be a series of plagues and then he'd show his might. So Moses had an idea. But at this point, God hardens Pharaoh's heart. He don't got no chance. His chances are up. In the heart of his servants, that I might show these signs, my signs before him. So it, it, he explains it to Moses. This is to show in Egypt whose people they've been messing with because you're my people. They don't mess with my people. And that you may tell in the ears of your sons and your, your son and your son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that you may know how that I am the Lord. Um, in time, when Joshua went to conquer the land, the people still talked about what Israel and God did in Egypt. It was just that devastating that they knew that these were the people whose God did that. So they was still a fear for a while, long time because of the plagues. And Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus the Lord God of the Hebrews, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? In Egypt, the Pharaoh thought he was a god. So there was an issue of pride, definitely. And the issue of pride kept him from letting him go. He didn't really, and when we have an issue of pride, we can't really be used by God the way he wants us to. We've got to be humble. Else, if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locust into your coast. Okay, now, the hail destroyed the fields. So having locusts come and eat well, may have been starting to grow again. This would have been devastating. And they shall cover the face of the earth, the one that that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat and subdue that which is escaped, which remains to you from the hail, and shall eat every tree that grows for you out in the field. And they shall fill your houses and your and the houses of all your servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither your fathers nor your fathers' fathers have seen since the day they were upon the earth to this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. So not only are they going to eat what's starting to grow back up, they're actually going to go in their houses and eat what they've been storing in case of stuff like this happens. Because when they saw the devastation, they might have put some aside for famine coming. Well, that's going to be gone. The locusts are going to eat that. There's going to be very, very little left. There's going to be some people having to starve. And Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do, not, do you not know... Yet the Egypt is destroyed. So the servants are realizing we can't handle anymore. You need to do what he need, says so we can rebuild. Because at this point, I think they could have rebuilt. And it, come, and it starts at a point where there is no rebuild. And that point's getting close. But at this point, I think they can see they can rebuild. And Moses said... All right, verse 8. And Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh and said to them, Go, serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds. We will go, for we must hold a feast to the Lord. God don't exclude anybody. Everybody should be able to worship the Lord. 
not just certain people, not just people high with money, not just men, not just everybody. The Lord wants everybody to come to Him, not just a certain group of people. Now, with the, in Egypt and most societies, the men were the only ones really allowed to go into the temples and things. And he said, Let the Lord be so with you. I will let you go. And, your, and the little ones look for evil is before you. So he ain't letting them go, all go. He's agreed to let the men go. But the Lord wants all his people to go worship. He don't want just the men. We all need to be worshiping the Lord. Okay. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, I will wait until the child is weaned. Then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and abide forever. So we see here, they wait. Moses had to wait. Sometimes we know what the Lord has for us, but we're not ready yet. So we, it's best to wait for him to lead. We can't get ahead of them. 